dive into uh, three kind of main topics. What are price savings? Um, give some of the history in the, in the economic context for price savings. And then finally talk about why price savings on Ethereum are so much better than traditional price savings. And all that is gonna kind of build towards my thesis for you today, which is that price savings are the best, um, the best way for uh, the majority of the world to start using blockchain technology. Um, and I should have said at the outset, my name is Leighton Cusack. Um, I'm coming to you live from New York City, where we all were originally kind of supposed to be before the pandemic kind of changed everything, but now I'm in my apartment. So um, so that's what this presentation is going to be about. It's just going to be 10 minutes. We'll get through it pretty quick. And uh, thank you for your time and joining. So let's jump in with um, what are price savings. So price savings um, are built on a very simple concept. And the basic idea is it's a savings account, but instead of earning um, any interest, you get a 0% APR. So instead of earning interest, you have a chance to win um, prizes. So for every dollar deposited, you're merited a chance to win a prize. So, you know, a typical savings account, you would earn maybe one or 2% APR, but on a prize savings account, you get zero APR, but you have a chance to win a prize. And this is possible because the prizes that you have a chance to win are funded by the interest that accrues on all of the accounts. So say there's a million dollars or let's be more realistic. Let's say there's $10 billion that are in the prize savings accounts. Um, all of the interest that's generated would go to maybe one or two people depending on um, how that price savings account is structured. So that's the, the basic idea of, um, of what a price savings account is. So to kind of make this tangible, you know, this is from Wealthfront. I took the screenshot last night. I thought this was funny. It says cash account that works as hard as you and it pays you 0.35% APR. So apparently you don't work very hard. Um, <clears throat> so this would be a normal savings account, right? You uh, deposit $100 at the end of the year, you'd have an extra 35 cents from that 0.35% APR. This is what a prize savings account would look like. You deposit $100 at the end of the year, you still have $100, but during that year, you would have had multiple chances to win hundreds, thousands, millions of dollars. Um, again, just depending on how that prize savings product is, uh, is structured. So prize savings are not a new idea. Um, speaking, I'm assuming this is kind of a crypto audience. They're not super well known in the crypto world, I would say, but it's not a new idea at all. Actually, according to the National Bureau of Economic Research here in the United States, uh, the first price savings program was started in 19, or sorry, 1694 in the United Kingdom. Um, and this is just a partial list of countries that today have, have price savings products. Uh, I actually to zoom in on like one country, what price savings looks like to get a feel for the market size of how big this is. This is um, in the U UK. So the current price savings program in the UK, it's called premium bonds. If anyone's joining us right now from the UK, you may have been familiar with it. You may have had a grandma who gave you premium bonds, it's kind of common thing. Um, so right now there's a hundred billion dollars just in the UK deposited into price savings from 20 million unique account holders. And that in 2019 alone, generated $1.35 billion in prizes that went to all of these people. So that's the scale just of the UK. Obviously, if we were calculating all the price savings programs in the whole world, we'd be talking you know, over a trillion, um, over a trillion dollars. Uh, I actually thought this was interesting just for more historical context. These are the posters that were used to um, promote price savings when it was first introduced or reintroduced in the UK in 1956. The current program was reintroduced. And um, you know, I, one thing particularly that's interesting about this, if you look at how they talked about them 60, 70 years ago, they said, you can't lose and you may win. Um, the language used to describe it is the exact same language we use to talk about prize savings protocols on Ethereum today. But, you know, just now we're doing it on Ethereum. Back then they were doing it on a poster they, they put around. So I just think that's kind of an interesting historical, historical parallel. So why are price savings so popular, right? I think we've hopefully established what price savings are and that it is a popular thing but what makes it so popular? And um, so I wanna briefly talk about the economics of price savings, because I think when most people look at price savings, at first they kind of think that's interesting, that's cool, that's kind of like a, a fun idea, it's kind of like cute, but they don't think of it as like a serious economic primitive. And that's, um, so I want, that's why I wanna briefly look at the kind of the economics of it, because I do believe it is a serious economic primitive. Um, this slide basically shows a very standard risk return profile. So the golden rule of all investing is the more risk you take on, the more potential return you have. The less risk you take on, the less potential return you have. So at the top right there, you see your friend startup. So you invest in your best friend startup, you might have, be in the next Google, but you also most likely are gonna lose all your money. 
you invest in Ethereum, you're a little bit lower. Maybe as time goes on, that improves. Stocks, you're lower on risk, lower return. Bonds, lower risk, et cetera. A savings account, obviously, is going to have the lowest return because the risk is essentially essentially zero. Um, Prize savings completely breaks this paradigm, right? It breaks the golden rule of investing, which is this kind of incredible thing. And it says you don't have to take on any risk outside of what you would have in a savings account. You know, you're, it's incredibly low risk, but it's also potential for incred incredibly high return. And that is why it's a completely differentiated product offering from any other consumer financial product. I think it's may maybe easiest to explain in meme form. So usually a consumer has to choose, do I want to have safety or do I want to have reward with my capital? And price savings says, why not both? Um, which, you know, everyone always prefers to have both, I think. So here's like one concrete example of how those economics can play out uh, for an individual. Um, so we're with the price savings protocol built on Ethereum, someone deposited $10 um, that they had deposited for, um, for 30 days. And in that 30 days, they won $1,659. So that's a 16,000% return in 30 days. And obviously I'm cherry picking like one of the more fortunate, one of the most lucky people. But the point is no one else lost their money. So there's no other financial instrument like that, right? Like what could you put $10 into today and have an actual chance of having a 16,000% return on that in 30 days? There's literally, there's nothing, right? You can't do that with stocks. You can't do that with, um, with, with a lottery ticket. You can't do that with, um, with even the craziest kind of crypto coins you can come up with. You could, you could potentially have that return, but you wouldn't have the no risk on your principal, right? So you can't have, there's no other financial instrument that affords you a chance for 16,000% returns without needing to risk your principal. Um, so I just share that because I think it's a tangible example of why price savings are an incredibly important financial instrument, especially to people who don't have access to very much capital. Because if you only have $100 of savings, then 2% compounding even for 10 years is only going to get you, you know, $20. So this is why I believe price savings will onboard the majority of people to the blockchain for the first time. Because it is, uh, most people don't have... Um, most people don't have uh, extra money to put into exotic financial products. They're not going to be longing and shorting ETH. They're not even going to be, you know, getting leverage on Bitcoin. The, so they need a product that pairs financial security with an opportunity for outsized rewards. Um, so, so far, I've talked about what is price savings, the history, the economics of it, and, and why that's so important as a financial primitive. Now I want to talk about why price savings are so much better on Ethereum. And um, I'm going to go through just kind of a few examples of what makes it so much better than the existing alternatives. So first, global, right? So um, premium bonds, <laughs> if I want to buy a premium bond, the UK price savings program I mentioned, I would have to go to the UK. Um, so traditionally, price savings accounts require you to enter in a local currency and participation is limited by natural, national borders. On Ethereum, anyone in the world can enter using global digital currencies. Um, second big one, trust minimized. Right, so traditionally price savings require a lot of trust. You have to trust that the people who are running the program are actually fairly choosing winners, not choosing their friends. You have to trust that um, that the people who win actually get the money. On Ethereum, uh, it can be administrated and verified in a trust minimized fashion. It does not require a third party to back it and to audit it because anyone can audit it. Uh, scalable. So traditionally, price savings require a lot of overhead. They're overhead intensive, and you know if you're trying to derive prizes from interest, which interest on, um, you know, safe investments is not that high, then it matters a lot that you're capital efficient, right? So, um, so traditionally, uh, price savings require a lot of overhead on Ethereum, there's zero incremental cost to add new users. So you can have every person in the globe in the price savings um, account, and there's not going to be additional costs versus if there's just 10 people in that price savings account. And so that leads to um, much higher efficiency, which ultimately leads to larger prices. Uh, the fourth one here is programmable, right? So if I want to build something on top of the premium bonds that I mentioned from the UK, it's like, this is super, it's super um, popular product. And if I want to build something on top of it, I can't, it's impossible. There's no programming interface for it. On Ethereum, it's a, a price savings protocol is extent, extensible and derivative products can easily be built on top of it. Um, and then this last one is the most important, I think, which is distributed. And what I mean by distributed is, is, is the ownership of the protocol and the governance of the protocol. 
So traditionally, price savings are owned and administrated by third-party institutions, but on Ethereum, you can have it owned and administrated by um, the people who are actually contributing value to the network, which would be the savers themselves, right? So it totally shifts that economic um, paradigm. So for all those reasons, um, I think price savings on its own is already a very, very compelling financial product. And if you put it on Ethereum, it is so much better that I believe it is one of the killer apps for Ethereum. And I think makes the most sense to onboard um, the majority of the world into blockchain products. And of course, there'll be many others that they want to use, but I think this, this makes a lot of sense to get people started. Um, so that's why um, I'm working on price savings uh, pool together is a price savings protocol for Ethereum that has launched, but is still very much actively being worked on and under development. And so if you're compelled by this idea of building um, price savings accounts uh, to on Ethereum to, um, to onboard the next millions of people into, into blockchain, then contribute, come and join us. Uh, these are a couple of places you can get started, but um, Twitter, Discord, but if you go from there, you can obviously um, learn a lot and you can contribute in many other ways, but this is just kind of a quick touch point. So um, that's all I have for you today. Like I said, this would be pretty quick. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> forgot this slide. This is definitely an important slide. I just wanted to make sure. So, you know, when I was talking about the economics of price savings, I'm talking about no risk, right? And I'm talking about that in an economic paradigm of how you're evaluating the tool. Obviously, in the reality of the real world, like if you go to pool together and use the current instantiation of the price savings protocol, there's risk associated with that. There's risk associated with using DAI, which it requires. There's risk associated with the contracts that it runs on. So I just want to make that super clear for people who aren't aware of that. Um, we do a lot of risk uh, disclosure on our website, but, um, but yeah. I just wanted to make sure I'm differentiating between when I'm talking about the economic paradigm versus when I'm talking about um, uh, when I'm talking about just the actual uh, the current instantiation. So that is what I have for you today. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope you're convinced about price savings being a very important uh, economic primitive. And um, I will figure out how to close this window and, and close out here. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm.